In the name of Allah, I am Ahmed Hassanan and I am with you. In this course, I will talk about electrical load calculations and design. We must understand that an electrical engineer, whether working in high voltage, medium voltage or low voltage, or in other words, in the fields of power generation, substations, distribution networks, electrical contracting or consulting, must be fully knowledgeable about electrical design and calculations. It is very difficult to be an electrical engineer if I cannot calculate the correct rated current of a circuit breaker or the cross-sectional area of a cable for any electrical load, whether static or dynamic. The first lecture of this course is an introduction to the meaning of electrical load calculations. If we work in any company or on any project and are required to perform electrical calculations for a load, we must first understand the meaning of the term load calculations and what is required in these calculations which we will learn in this course. To perform electrical calculations for any load, we must first determine its type. There are two types of electrical loads, static loads and dynamic loads. Therefore, we must understand the difference between them and whether this difference is important in electrical load calculations. For example, if we have a static load with a rated power of 10 kilowatts and a dynamic load with the same rated power, are the electrical calculations the same or different? Although both loads have the same rated power, the calculations may vary. This is what we will learn in this course. I will also discuss the rating factors, DF, and their importance in electrical load calculations. Additionally, I will explain what happens if these factors are ignored in our calculations. It is unfortunate that many engineers rely on a single table for cable cross-sectional areas using only one current rating. This is a serious mistake because a cable can carry different current values depending on its installation and laying method. For example, as we can see in the catalog in front of us, a copper conductor cable with a cross-sectional area of 35 square millimeters and PVC insulation can carry six different current values. 171 amperes, 173 amperes, 123 amperes, 176 amperes, 138 amperes, and 134 amperes. So what is the correct current carrying capacity of a copper conductor cable with a cross-sectional area of 35 square millimeters? In this course, I will discuss this topic in detail. We must understand that the values of the rating factors, DF, depend on the cable's laying and installation method. For example, if cables are buried in the ground, the derating factors will differ from those for cables placed in the air. This means that current carrying capacity calculations will also vary. Cables are subjected to thermal effects due to their placement in air or underground, as well as the electric current flowing through them. Therefore, derating factors are crucial in electrical load calculations and we must carefully select the appropriate values. Additionally, I will explain in detail, step by step, how to perform voltage drop calculations for any cable. After selecting the correct cross-sectional area for the main phases, R, S and T, of a cable, as well as for the neutral and earthing conductors, we must calculate the voltage drop for that cable. Voltage drop calculations are crucial to ensure that the voltage at the cable's end is sufficient to operate the load and does not fall below the required values specified by standard regulations. As we can see, I will explain in detail, step by step, how to accurately perform voltage drop calculations for medium voltage cables using our catalog. As we can see, I will explain in detail, step by step, how to accurately perform voltage drop calculations for low voltage cables using our catalog. As we can see, this catalog contains various ready-made tables for calculating the voltage drop of low voltage cables in an easy and simple way. In detail and step by step, I will explain how to use these tables to accurately perform voltage drop calculations for low voltage cables using this catalog. I will also discuss short circuit calculations for electrical power cables. One of the most important steps in electrical power cable calculations is determining the short circuit currents. The short circuit calculation is the final step in determining the cross-sectional area of electrical power cables. After calculating the load current, thermal current 
and voltage drop for a cable, we must ensure that its cross-sectional area can withstand any expected short-circuit current. It is important to note that one of the most common causes of failure and damage to electrical power cables is their inability to withstand fault currents or expected short-circuit currents. Therefore, we must select and calculate the cross-sectional area of the electrical power cable based on short-circuit calculations. This involves determining the short-circuit current in kiloamperes and the short-circuit duration in seconds. This means that the short-circuit calculations for the cable depend on both the short-circuit current value in kiloamperes and the duration time in seconds. As we can see in the catalog, there are four tables for different cross-sectional areas and various cable insulation types. These tables show the maximum short-circuit currents in kiloamperes for these cables over different short-circuit duration times in seconds. Additionally, I will explain how to use these tables to determine the maximum short circuit current a cable can withstand, whether it is a copper or aluminum cable, and whether the insulation is PVC or XLP. But what should we do if we don't have any short circuit current tables? In this case, I will explain how to calculate the correct and suitable cross sectional area for any cable, whether it has an aluminum or copper conductor that can withstand the expected short circuit current for any duration. This can be done using just two equations, one for copper conductors and the other for aluminum conductors. I will also explain how to select the correct cross-sectional area for the neutral and earthing cable conductors. For example, as we can see, three-phase cables or multi-core cables contain three-phase conductors, R, S, and T, along with a neutral and an earthing conductor. On the left side, there is a multi-core cable with a cross-sectional area of 70 square millimeters for the three-phase conductors R, S, and T, and 35 square millimeters for both the neutral and earthing conductors. On the right side, there is another multi-core cable with a cross-sectional area of 70 square millimeters for the three-phase conductors R, S, and T, and the neutral conductor while the earthing conductor has a cross-sectional area of 35 square millimeters. So, my question is, how do we choose the correct cross-sectional area for this cable? Should it be the configuration on the right side or the left side? After selecting the correct cross-sectional area for the main phase conductors, R, S, and T, of a cable, I will explain the proper steps to determine the correct cross-sectional area for both the neutral and earthing conductors. The first table is used for calculating the cross-sectional area of the neutral conductor. The second table is used for calculating the cross-sectional area of the earthing conductor. I will also discuss the differences between miniature circuit breakers, MCB, molded case circuit breakers, MCCB, and air circuit breakers, ACB. As we can see, we have examples of these circuit breakers, and I will explain their differences. In a simple and easy to understand way, I will explain the differences between these circuit breakers. As we can see, I will provide you with a table showing the different rated currents for miniature circuit breakers, MCB, molded case circuit breakers, MCCB, and air circuit breakers, ACB. These tables will help you select the appropriate rated current for the circuit breaker needed in your calculations. For example, if you calculate the rated current of a circuit breaker for a load and find it to be 50 amperes, which one would you choose? Would you select a miniature circuit breaker, MCB, with a rated current of 50 amperes or a molded case circuit breaker, MCCB, with the same rated current? Additionally, I will explain the differences between MCBs, MCCBs and ACBs. Another example, if you calculate the rated current of a circuit breaker for a load and determine it to be 630 amperes. Which one would you choose? Would you select a molded case circuit breaker, MCCB, with a rated current of 630 amperes, or an air circuit breaker, ACB, with the same rated current? I will also explain in detail and step by step how to perform accurate calculations for any static load. First, I will explain the meaning of static loads and static load calculations. As we can see, 
In the simple single line diagram on the right, I will provide a detailed step-by-step -step explanation of how to calculate the rated current of the circuit breaker in amperes for any static load, how to determine the cross-sectional area of the cable in square millimeters for any static load, how to calculate the voltage drop of the cable in volts, how to determine the short circuit current in kiloamperes that the cable can withstand. Finally, I will provide a brief table to help you perform accurate calculations for any static load. You must follow its equations and steps carefully. I will also attach this table as a PDF file in this course for your reference. After that, I will provide an example of static load calculations and explain in detail and step by step how to perform accurate calculations for this load. As we can see in the simple single line diagram on the right, a 20 kilowatt static load with a power factor of 0.85. The cable length between the AC source and the static load is 110 meters. In this example, I will provide a detailed step-by-step -step explanation of how to perform accurate calculations for this load. This means I will teach you how to calculate the rated circuit breaker for this load in amperes, determine the cross-sectional area of the cable in square millimeters, calculate the voltage drop of the cable in volts, determine the short circuit current in kiloamperes that the cable can withstand. Additionally, I will explain the importance of the following factors in our calculations. A copper conductor cable, PVC insulation, multi-core cable, a burial depth of 60 centimeters, a ground temperature of 45 degrees Celsius. I will also explain how to determine and calculate the starting current for any motor. For example, if we have a motor nameplate that includes various technical data but does not specify the starting current, I will explain how to use the available data to calculate the starting current of the motor. I will also provide a detailed step-by-step -step explanation on how to perform accurate calculations for any dynamic or motor loads. First, I will explain the meaning of dynamic loads and dynamic load calculations. As we can see in the simple single line diagram on the right, I will provide a detailed step-by-step -step explanation of how to calculate the rated current of the circuit breaker in amperes for any motor. How to determine the cross-sectional area of the cable in square millimeters. Additionally, if we have a group of different motors, I will explain how to calculate the rated current of the main circuit breaker in amperes how to determine the cross-sectional area of the main cable in square millimeters, how to calculate the voltage drop of these cables in volts, how to determine the short circuit current in kiloamperes that the cable can withstand. Finally, I will provide you with three tables to help you perform accurate calculations for any type of load, whether static or dynamic. You must follow the equations and steps outlined in these tables, which I will attach as a PDF file in this course. Therefore, we must first determine whether the load is static or dynamic in order to select the appropriate table and follow its corresponding equations and steps. I will also explain how to accurately calculate the main cable size and the main circuit breaker rating for a group of individual motors or different loads. For example, as we can see in the simple single line diagram, if we have three motors, I will explain how to calculate the main cable size and the main circuit breaker rating for these motors. I will also provide an example of dynamic or motor load calculations and explain in detail and step by step how to perform accurate calculations for these motors. As we can see in the simple single line diagram, we have an AC panel and a group of eight AC motors. Three motors, each with a rated power of 5 horsepower. Two motors, each with a rated power of 10 horsepower. Three motors, each with a rated power of 16 horsepower. The cable length between the main power source and this panel is 130 meters. In this example, I will explain in detail, step by step, how to calculate the rated current of the circuit breaker in amperes for each motor. How to determine the cross-sectional area of each cable in square millimeters for each motor. How to calculate the rated current of the main circuit breaker in amperes. How to determine the cross-sectional area of the main cable in square millimeters.
How to calculate the voltage drop of the main cable in volts? How to calculate the short circuit current in kiloamperes that the cable can withstand? Additionally, I will provide a very important example of electrical load calculations for an office building. As we can see, we need to perform various calculations for this building. As we can see, the building consists of a basement, a ground floor, a first floor, a second floor, and a roof. The basement floor has three main loads. Elevator 1 with a rated power of 7 horsepower, elevator 2 with a rated power of 7 horsepower, and a water pump with a rated power of 30 kilowatts. The ground floor has various static loads with a total power of 10 kilowatts. The first floor has various static loads with a total power of 15 kilowatts. The second floor also has various static loads with a total power of 15 kilowatts. The roof floor has three main loads. Chiller 1 with a rated power of 150 kilowatts. Chiller 2 with a rated power of 150 kilowatts. And a water pump with a rated power of 30 kilowatts. As we can see in the simple single line diagram, I will explain in detail and step by step how to calculate the rated current of each circuit breaker in amperes for elevator 1, elevator 2 and the water pump. How to calculate the cross section area of each cable in square millimeters for elevator 1, elevator 2 and the water pump. How to calculate the rated current of the main circuit breaker in amperes. How to calculate the cross section area of the main cable for the basement floor in square millimeters. As for the ground floor calculations, as we can see in the simple single line diagram, I will explain in detail, step by step, how to calculate the rated current of the main circuit breaker in amperes, how to determine the cross section area of the main cable for the ground floor in square millimeters. As for the first floor calculations, as we can see in the simple single line diagram, I will explain in detail, step by step, how to calculate the rated current of the main circuit breaker in amperes, how to determine the cross-section area of the main cable for the first floor in square millimeters. As for the second floor calculations, as we can see in the simple single line diagram, I will explain in detail, step by step, how to calculate the rated current of the main circuit breaker in amperes, how to determine the cross-section area of the main cable for the second floor in square millimeters. As for the roof floor calculations, as we can see in the simple single line diagram, I will explain in detail step by step. How to calculate the rated current of each circuit breaker in amperes for chiller 1, chiller 2 and the water pump. How to determine the cross-section area of each cable in square millimeters for chiller 1, chiller 2 and the water pump. How to calculate the rated current of the main circuit breaker in amperes. How to determine the cross-section area of the main cable for the roof floor in square millimeters. Finally, the last lecture will cover the distribution transformer and the main distribution board calculations. After completing the various calculations for this building, I will explain how to determine and select the rated power of the medium voltage distribution transformer, the main distribution board, and the appropriate cross-section area of the medium voltage cable with a length of 700 meters. Additionally, I will calculate the voltage drop and perform the short circuit calculation for this medium voltage cable. Finally, I will present a summary of the calculations for each panel board on every floor. Additionally, I will present the final single line diagram including all the circuit breaker data and the cross-section area of each cable in this building. At this stage, we have completed all calculations for the building, including all cables, panel boards, the main distribution board, and the medium voltage distribution transformer. Thank you for your attention. See you in the next lecture.